In today's lecture, uh, it's going to be uh, continuous for the previous uh, two videos that I uploaded for Unit 5. And in this video, or today's video, I'm going to continue to Unit 5, uh, Lecture 3 or Video 3. In this video, I will uh, focus on making uh, wall types and then applying walls for this uh, basic or small uh, simple villa that I'm having here. So before I go ahead and start creating uh, the wall types, I will just zoom in and with the DI just to take in a dimension and then measure the, the walls relationship to the center line. And if you noticed that this side or the, the, the inner face uh, to the center line or to the grid is 114 and the other side is 160 meaning that there's a it's 140 both sides but there's a 20 millimeter of uh, an exterior finish so let's follow this assumption and always pay attention to the grids they might not be usually or always in the center of the walls so that's been said I'll go to architecture and then wall types and then I can just focus on any type of wall that I, I can see if I can go ahead with the 200 mil generic wall that I have in here and I just simply click edit type and then duplicate that don't work on the original uh, you know types or architectural wall types that existed in the main library of Revit always duplicate and then find something very close to what you want and then duplicate it uh, naming here is really or a seriously important issue so let's name it uh, it's uh, again it's a 300 mil so uh, I'll use my name here it's highly recommended to use your name as uh, it's a really good indicator for you to later on identify the walls that you did or you created by your own and then let's say a 300 mil which is the final thickness uh, and then probably it's a good idea to use you know the main component of the wall so let's say a 20 mil of any exterior tiles or any exterior finishes and then uh, let's say 140 uh, actually 280 uh, millimeter let's say brick for example and then finally we have paint so let's uh, let's finish this long boring name and then we go edit so in here in here exactly you're gonna find one uh, layer available and it's within the function it's a structure function and that's the main thing and this one you find it you know like uh, wrapped by two uh, hypothetical or virtual layer uh, where they represent the core boundary they are not real they are just uh, they existed to distinguish the structural part that actually going to send uh, further on if you want to rivet structure for example to analyze uh, the bearing loads of the building here that's the main one that's the main thing anything outside it should be like an, an exterior or that way if it goes down it should be an interior clad or exterior finishes or interior finishes anyway so that's the most important the highest hierarchy or the highest priority here number one which is the structural layer and as I mentioned it's a brick so by clicking the small button here uh, it should activate for us the material uh, editor and uh, from the material browser you can just write here brick or just pick up any type of brick you have so I'm gonna select this guy here and I'm gonna change that to 280 okay and then uh, I will set insert and then another copy of this guy here of this layer has been created I don't want it to be here I want it to be an exterior finish so I'm gonna push that up and here I'm gonna use finish 4 which is for the exterior and in the material here anything you like any exterior material let's say exterior finishes if you if of course it's if you have something more physical or actual material that you want whatever whatever you want you can pick from here most of it actually available or you can load from here uh, whatever you want uh, or uh, you can just come here let me go to the CMU for example concrete masonry unit this one and I can just go ahead and you know 
uh, duplicate the selected material and then I name it. The, the thing that I just uh, hypothetically assumed, so I can go exterior finishes or whatever, whatever you want again. And I can just uh, pick that. It have a nice uh, tiling here, nice, nice uh, finishes that look like a CMU or concrete blocks. And we hit OK. And I'll give it the thickness that I brought here, 200 mil. Sorry, 20 mil. And the final thing here, I'm going to go insert again, and then I'm going to push it down twice. So that's the structural thing. That's the outside up, and that's the inside down. So I'm going to just select uh, a membrane layer. You can go with this one. And some people use Finish 5, Finish 5 for interiors, but it's paint. So if you have Finish 5, you have to add a physical thickness even if it's one millimeter and in this case you have to make this 279 or you go membrane so you can keep the thickness of zero otherwise if you pick finish five you know like it's gonna get lots of warning messages to bore you out of that anyway so pick again for the material and just right here paint if you don't like any paint what from whatever you want uh, again, uh, pick up uh, pick up anything and, and change it to be, you know, like the naming you like. So I'm just going to pick whatever this, cloud white or whatever, and the thickness is zero, so that's it basically. So I'm going to hit OK, and now I created the, the actual layer, or sorry, the actual wall type that I want. And now you have to be very careful that when you apply it, you don't pick the wall center line because it's not uh, it's not a symmetrical wall, it's asymmetrical. So go to core center line and then click and move your hand. Again, it's it's look like really correct, but before it would be smart to go to fine and then architecture and then that's my wall again and click and see that when you see when you click here I'm fine, you're gonna see that uh, you know the 20 mil exterior finishes and be aware if you go to the clockwise or counterclockwise because you know like it's gonna be a big mess here anyway so just ignore any kind of architectural fenestration or any opening like doors and windows and just go outside you know to the to follow the main exterior boundary of the building as such and now you know uh, that's the nice thing of Revit. It's actually, it actually knows that I am working or applying those walls in the ground floor, right? That's the double clicked here. That's the bold active viewport that I am in. And by that, so if I select this, that's the property panel. It's gonna show you uh, the big mistake that I did or the usual rookie mistake that any one of us do. Uh, is uh, the wall have um, not only the thing to to be considered that the the multi complex uh, vertical layer that I just defined for you, but rather it also have the base uh, sorry the base constraint and the top constraint. So the base constraint probably it's easier to be understood. It's 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 following or it's attached uh, to the ground floor, which is this guy. So whatever active views, and then you co-create the wall, the base concentrating gonna follow that. For the top concentrating, so if I go to the east elevation, see that's the base, it's always following the, the active viewport that it was ground. And then the top, which is a default value of a top concentrating, it's it's unconnected, that's the type of it, and it's an assumption, it's an assumption of 8,000 uh, default value has been applied is lots of people I saw just jump, jump in here and make this 4,000 one of the biggest mistake this is not again this is a building information modeling application this is not a CAD this is not a 3d studio max so this is not a parametric modeling if when you change that up you know uh, this guy will be fixed because it doesn't have any upper concentrate but if I change that up you know like it's gonna change and you know all the walls is actually following to this one so you have to understand that this is a parametric architectural element and that mean they gonna follow the constraints if you design them correctly 
and by default rivet design the lower concentrate which is this guy to be fixed to the ground floor so whatever you change in the ground floor the wall the four or six five volt that I added gonna follow this guy but the top you can specify them from the beginning or just forget them like I've done anyway so I go to the 3d and probably hover just put the mouse above the wall we call that hovering don't click just put the mouse above and then hit tab on your keyboard and then click it's gonna select all the walls back to the property and instead of the top concentrate unconnected just pick the level one floor and hit apply and now you're gonna see that all the walls actually following you know the same upper concentrate it's not unconnected it's really restricted by the top concentrate which is the level one and that's the beauty of it so now if I go to level four and I change it from four to four meter to five meters you're gonna see all the top constraints actually following that and that's the beauty of it you know anyway so I'm gonna undo that now that's been said that's my walls now I can go to the level one and again uh, so easy again architectural wall here same walls and instead uh, of making the mistake again I'm gonna just concentrate the top part of it to the roof and see the base constraints on level one which is the active one as I said following the basic thing that I've done and carefully the intersection now you zoom in and with the moving I can see the layers of the wall see and that's mean that I need to go here and change that to fine and then click wall again so I can see where is the inside and where is the outside see that's the outside top top part of the wall is the outside so I'm going I'm drawing that correctly so again I'm gonna zoom in here when I see the intersection I'm gonna click I think it's uh, fair and easy just a square and don't go with the endpoints always try to find the you know the the intersection part so you align those walls correctly and then close that as such and whatever you're gonna close close it it's gonna trim and fill it and do this beauty thing that rivet really excel in it and as you do that you notice that the wall is actually hiding all the AutoCAD drawing and especially the windows and I'm gonna talk about that later on when we're gonna insert that uh, windows in it so that's basically it now we have you know the ground floor walls and the first floor which is here going as a cantilever if I go to the roof I can do the same actually the roof is bigger so the roof is not like that it's also have this part cantilever so let's do that again so again wall but before I'll go to east elevation and I noticed that I don't know what's going on here so I will go back to AutoCAD and see what the design is actually telling me it's actually assuming that there is a 500 mil uh, level of the top of this parapet so in this case you either define a level so, so notice here as a one mil, one mil, uh, 1000 millimeter that's the level 2 parapet while the roof parapet is undefined so I'm just gonna follow that so I'm gonna make this guy unconnected and then I'm gonna make this with a special uh, extra level here so let's do this as unconnected because it doesn't have a level uh, it's not a big deal if you create your own level here it's not a big issue so again roof and then walls and here I'm gonna put that unconnected and 500 hit apply and then you know do the thing It should be fine also but you're not gonna see it because it's actually the view is above uh, the roof by 1000 millimeter and you are you know the wall height is 500 mil so you're not gonna see anything so that's basically it that's right actually it's a cantilever here and beautiful double check your work in the east elevation it also seems right if you want to go di just to hit the top of that and the level and you find that 500 mil so you're technically working perfectly right now you need to create a level here 
but it's not a flaw. So you don't need to go to create a level here because that, by this method from the architecture and then datum panel and then level command, you are actually going to create a flow and a level and we don't want that. There is no one going to walk on this parapet. So all what you need is to select this guy and then hit copy here and push that up 1000 mil and when you deselect or you're clicking anywhere out you're gonna see those are a bluish head that means they are hyperlink so when I double click here it's gonna go to the roof you know while this black guy it means it doesn't have a hyper there is no level in it and if you don't believe just have a look at the plans here there is no plans on the left side in the in the you know in the project browser so it's just a level you can just break that up like that and click on it and just name it for example level one uh, parapet and again you need to go to the level one and work on that so and uh, basically it's here and here two places so I'm gonna go architecture and here the same wall and I'm gonna pick here the top concentrate and I'm gonna choose the level one parapet so see that's why it's useful and I, it's gonna lock the top concentrate of that wall the parapet to this specific level that I want and I deliberately designed that so you understand the difference between created it as and connected that's what we've done in the roof or use the top concentrate as a level only like what I've done here so again uh, clicking here and let's go to that finishing this actually as such and then let's do that again here and some yep a little bit annoying and then you click that in here and we finished now let's go to the 3d and see what we've, what we've done see the parapets here it's uh, perfectly okay and uh, as you can see this 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 and the same thing here and there is a, probably a line here that means something is really wrong let me get, have a look at the east elevation anything wrong here nope north you see that's the parapet and it's a flush with this one so it's really really happy another south elevation probably just double check that again it's a flush it's been no nothing wrong that's what we want and then the west yep it seems perfectly back to the 3d and by that uh, we've done or we finished the basic uh, creation of the wall type and the basic placement of those walls now in the second video or the next video actually which will be the fourth one I will show you how to apply the slabs and how to cut that slab within the walls and how to place them correctly and the type of slab that you can do for this building specifically how to open uh, that uh, <clears throat> how to open that courtyard in it and then in the video after I'm going to show you how to do partitions Anyways, I uh, wish that you find this uh, video uh, useful. Thank you and have a good night.